Hello everyone and welcome to The Little Blue Fly. In today's video, I am going to be putting together a magnolia and apple centerpiece for my kitchen area for Christmas. Um, quite some time back, I did share this image um, of, you know, different berries and apples and cedars. Um, I believe that I... Yes, there was some pine in there as well, um, and hollies and the berries. And so I will be using many of these, well, actually all of these items and more to put together this arrangement. Now, I wanted to make sure that um, I made it a really good tutorial just in case any of you might want to try your hand at it. Um, almost every item is faux, so this centerpiece is actually going to last for quite a few years. That is what's great about working with um, the faux. And anyhow, I should have had a video out yesterday, but it was my baby's birthday. Even though we celebrated early, we went ahead and did something else special for her as well. So that being said, let's begin, shall we? Okay, so we are going to be starting off with a couple foam pieces. Uh, this is a, a cone and it is how many inches? 24 inches tall. I actually wish that I could have found um, a taller one, but there were none to be had. So I purchased another piece to lift it up if I needed to. These were purchased from Hobby Lobby. Actually, I think they were purchased from Hobby Lobby. If not, Michael's, one or the other. So again, this piece, if I want it to be taller, which I believe I am, um, I will just add it at the bottom again i want to make sure that this is a good step-by-step -step tutorial just in case any of you are interested in making one yourself now this uh these are magnolia leaves from hobby lobby and one could if you have that magnolia tree in your backyard uh, by all means i would be using real magnolia but i don't have it um, I didn't feel like going out with my shears and trying to find some trees and cutting at them because when you purchase the real magnolia leaves, it gets super expensive. Um, now these were $19.99, but 50% off. So I was able to grab two of them for the price of one at Hobby Lobby. But there's nothing like the real, but I absolutely love these foes as well. Okay, so I cut off some branches and I just went ahead and pressed it into the cone and then I will be pushing them down. So I went ahead and made the hole first and then I'm going to add some glue on and look, it's been a while. That glue is actually, look at that, it has a yellow tint to it because it's been quite a while since I've turned on my glue gun. I really would like to invest in one of those glue trays. As much as I work with florals, it kind of doesn't make sense that I don't already have one of those. But anyways, well, I'm just going around and I'm putting one up and then one down. And they're probably a good two inches away from each other. Now I'm going to start making the triangle shape. I wasn't sure because this is the first time um, I've ever made one of these. I was uh, actually inspired from a photo I came across in um, on Pinterest. So again, now we're making the 
triangle shape. And again, keeping it about two in keeping them about two inches apart from each other. Two, sometimes three. And I'm wearing my gloves so I don't burn myself. So this is how much one um, bundle of, this is how far it got me in this process. So I will definitely be using more than two. So I'm just going to show you how much um, of the stem I cut off. So I believe, no, I know for sure. I used three um, bundles of these magnolias. Again, if you use the faux, wait for them to come on sale at Hobby Lobby. Okay, so again, I want to point out how it is like in between two to three inches and make the triangle shape. Because it is a long leaf and a wide leaf, so it's going to be um, covering a good surface area. Now, right now, they're just out and a little bit crazy, but to give it some form, um, I will be using some... I'll show you here in a moment. <laughs> So I probably have like, you know, a good inch here at the end and up at top, you, you want to make sure that it is shorter so it doesn't go through the other side. Now, even though um, this is these leaves are large. Okay, real quick. This one came off. What I like to do is sometimes, you know, where the leaves go onto the branch, it's just, it's loose. You know, it's pretty much a, a manufacturer defect as I see it. And I like to put a bit of glue on there um, so it will just stay in place. And I bend it down and go ahead, put some glue on it and push it up at top. But what I was saying is these magnolia leaves, you know, they're quite long and wide. See, look, ouch, ouch. If I was not wearing these gloves, that would have given me a blister. Anyhow, this probably was this took me the longest putting on these magnolia leaves now look one could turn it around you know and show the brown um the back side of the leaf but i just really didn't want to because the vein on the back it's very um it's too plastic looking now i'll probably show a piece of it but not too much So basically the magnolia is making, <clears throat> excuse me, the base, the majority of the base of this topiary. Okay, so here we just have magnolias everywhere and Probably a good five um, to six inches here at the bottom that I can work with using um, my other cedars and pines and apples. And then 
a couple inches up at the top. So see how it's just real plastic looking right here, that vein. So again, if I do show the back of one of these leaves, it will just be like a little side of it. Now you can see some of these are being nice right now. And that is because I used some of these floral pins to tuck them down, hold them in place to help um, give this topiary a nice shape. Because these leaves are so large, hot glue, no, that will not work. Um, these pins are absolutely needed for this arrangement. So they're called greening pins and they were purchased from Michael's. And they're super easy to work with. They go right through the floral with ease, right into the foam. So again, the reason why I am using these pins is to make a nice shape. And if you're working with the real magnolia, I would still go ahead and use these pins. Now, I like to get them when they're green because it just, you know, works better. But they didn't have any. So again, you just turn your leaves to how you want them to be. And then you just use a pin. and just press it down. Now, every now and then, it might not want to because you're getting hung up on one of the veins on the back. That's okay. Just switch it about a little bit. You don't have to too much worry about the pins because the leaf up on top will cover it. And if it does not, well, then I will be sharing something at the end that works perfectly to cover up the pins. And you just keep going around the cone until all of them are pretty much in place. And you'll find that when you're making this arrangement, you don't like the way one of the magnolias are going or a group of them just simply pull out the pin and resituate it to how you like it now up here at the top when you're at the top of the cone you have to be really careful and gentle you have to put a good support back behind the cone because it's much thinner up at top and you don't want the tip of it to break off because that would just <laughs> be devastating. I mean, I guess you could pin it back on or glue it, but it just, no, that wouldn't be a good thing. Okay, so you can see how some of them are taking a really nice shape and some are still a bit wild. And as I am working with this arrangement, I will be situating the magnolias. Um, right now, I'm just, it, it's like a, like a rough draft here. You know, I'm putting them down, but as I'm working the project, you know, things are going to move about. I'll use one simple leaf. Um, for areas that I need to stand out a little bit more than others. But again, you will see that these magnolias are going to start switching about here and there as I am 
working through the project. You can see there's a gap here. No worries. Simple fix for that. So single leaves here and there. Like I said, this is the, it was important that I really covered this process um, because if your base is not right, it will completely throw off the centerpiece. At least I think so. Again, at the end of the video, I will be sharing what I will be placing inside these um, open gaps. And see some of the brown, some of the backing is showing. It gives it some depth, some nice interest. Okay, so we are finished with the magnolia, thank goodness. Now we're going to work um, here at the bottom and up at the top as well. I will be adding in some of these holly stems. These are really, um, they're so real looking and, and the feel. Again, when you pay a little bit more um, for your floral, you get what you pay for, pretty much. I love the variegated leaves, and then, you know, we have some red berries. You know, when have, and when you have the variegated leaves, it just, um, it helps make an arrangement just look that much more real. Now I paid $16.99 for these and I'm going to pull this price off the best I can anyhow with these gloves on just to share with you the name and it is Regency. So I didn't, oh, how many stems are in here? Are there five or six of them? Here's the back, some numbers for you. If that helps. Again, I'm hoping here we'll see how things happen um, next year. But if all is well, I definitely plan on going to market so I can start offering um, some greenery. I believe there are five, maybe six stems on here. And what I will, I will share that in a moment. The, the shape I am wanting the bottom to take. So some will be cut shorter and others will have a little bit more length to them. So I took off probably a good two and a half, three inches on some. Have them placed on the bottom. So again, one up higher, the other lower. Some tips have berries, others do not. And then I keep, you know, again, a good two to three inches in between. Because I will be adding many different types of cedars and pines on the bottom of this cone. You know, there's even real holly branches. If you don't want to work with the faux, you can work with the real. Now, they will not last as long, but it surely would be gorgeous. Oh, 
Okay, so I made one pass through of the holly. And now I will add some up at top here. Now again, it will be cut much shorter, the stem. And you just really want to give the cones a good support because you do not want it to break off. Now I could have put more of a diagonal cut on my stem, but I just too much didn't fuss with it because I already got, you know, a, a good feel on how this foam is working. So because this is longer, I will be able to go ahead and bend it down onto the magnolia. The variegated, variegated leaves give it some nice um, interest. No worries about having that raw edge on one of the holly berries because so many different layers will be going on. It's all about layering. I'm telling you, if you watch this video and you go out there and you get the product, you will be able to make one exactly like this if you want to, or even just add in your own little um, special touches of what, what you like yourself. Okay, now we're going to work with some pines. You know, we just want many different styles and shapes all over this arrangement. I placed one in up at the top already. The wider the pine or the leaf, the more space that will get filled up. And that is a great thing. So I actually cut these pieces of pine from just some old stems that I had. Okay, now we're going to start working with these apples that were purchased from Michael's. Now these leaves right here, um, no, they just, um, I don't care for them. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so they will be coming off, but the apples, they will work just fine. Now, if one wanted to with the apples, um, again, they are from Michael's. Wait till they come on sale. Um, but with the apples, you know, if you wanted to change the stem in there, you could actually use a twig, you know, some branches and place it in uh, into the apples. Who knows? That's something I might do next year when I look at it and, you know, refresh it or, or do whatever. But you could definitely add in a little twig for the apples and that would be cute. Now I had um, on top of my nutcracker tree, I shared the cedar branches for my tree topper. Well, I had a couple more seed. Well, I purchased a couple more cedar branches and I just snipped off all the branches and I'm adding them in. This is where faux is nice, because if you use a reel in this arrangement, they would droop, they would crumble. Um, 
It just wouldn't work out too well. And putting this together, you know, it does take... It does take a few hours because you are working with layers. But this cedar is a nice filler. And the color is gorgeous. And it was purchased from the Flower Gallery in Manassas. I'm loving the all the cedar, the faux cedar and pine that is coming out onto the market. They are really, really doing a great job in giving it a more natural look and feel. So I'm just going around the whole base and just plucking in. And then adding in some of the larger pine branches. And then I have a magnolia leaf down here at the bottom. Now these are long and I couldn't necessarily, <laughs> I'm a mess. I'm just cutting and gluing and everything else. But anyhow, I could not use the full leaf because it's just too long. So I am having to cut the tips off and then using hot glue to hold it on to the foam. I'm just gonna, going to place hot glue at the tip of it well, at the base of it, and just press it in. Okay, so I have my apples in, and I put my cedar around it. I have my holly stems. I added in some frosted berries. They were purchased from the flower gallery. And pretty much you're just wanting everything to mingle with one another. You know, have different shapes, different sizes, different colors, and just make sure that um, you, to place your cedar you know, around your apples, around your berries, just to give it more depth and interest. And the holly leaves, they're just very um, real looking for sure. So I'm going to add in a little bit more cedar because I'm trying to get that Christmas tree type of shape at the bottom. So I decided I'm definitely adding in another piece of foam. I put toothpicks in with hot glue and just pressing the top cone right on top. And now I have more height. And that means more floral. <laughs> but I've already taken you through the process, so I won't go through all of the other greenery, but I just wanted to share here, I have another pick. I believe these were purchased from Hobby Lobby. Um, they are nice. I'm going to get three different stems off of this, and one of them will be quite large, the one with the pine cone. So I will be able to fill in quite a bit of space with these. And again, it's all about using the different pines, cedars, hollies, variegated colors. I 
I'm making sure to, if I don't do it at the beginning, I will make sure to go over it with my hot glue gun after I press it in. I'll give it a nice shot of hot glue to make sure that it stays in place. And again, down here at the bottom, I'm going for the Christmas tree look, the magnolia. I just wanted that slender up at top. I'll add some glue in here as well. But it's really not going anywhere because of the toothpicks. And I could have used other craft pins as well. Okay, so I ha it's all filled in now. And I wanted to share moss. Moss is, it's, it's, um, it's, it's the secret weapon. <laughs> you have to use moss. Anyhow, this can be found at Hobby Lobby. So for all those empty spaces, I place moss in between the magnolias. I'm adding in some dried oranges um, just to give it that perfect touch. Place the moss in between the apples. I use smaller apples as well um, that were purchased from Michael's. And I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial on this centerpiece. <laughs>